Next up, we have perhaps the most adorable Pokemon of all time, Komala. It's not just a drowsy or sleeping koala, it's a comatose koala, hence the name and ability at that. It is among the most relatable Pokemon of all time, since it's literally always asleep. Even the log it holds is part of this design theme. It holds it like a pillow. It seems impossible and strange that such a Pokemon could battle, to say nothing of how immoral it seems to make such a Pokemon battle, but such strangeness is part and parcel of the Pokemon world, and it is our duty to invest investigate its presence in the competitive scene. And thus, we ask, how good was Komala actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. Kamala fascinated trainers from day one of Sun and Moon. Yeah, mono normal typing has famously been the downfall of many Pokemon throughout the ages, and Kamala wasn't necessarily going to be exempt from that tradition. But it had so many amazing traits, many of which could not be replicated by any other Pokemon. These were those that revolved around its unique ability, Comatose. Basically, Kamala is permanently considered to be asleep, but it isn't literally asleep, meaning it isn't prevented from attacking like a normal sleeping Pokemon would. In practice, this means it is immune to all stuff. Status. Many Pokemon would love for nothing more than to be completely immune to poison, burn, paralysis, freeze, and of course, opposing sleep. Furthermore, Komala is still able to use sleep talk. Why would you want to waste a move slot, you might wonder? Well, because Komala would use a set that has sleep talk as one of the only two moves instead of the usual four. The other move would be Last Resort, which could only be used once all of the user's other moves had been used. This type of strategy had been tried before in tiers like DPP Little Cup, with Pokemon like Apom and Meowth potentially being able to run fake out to safely activate last resort for themselves but with komala it was something else entirely it immediately had access to last resort since it could call it by using sleep talk last resort packed a monstrous 140 base power 210 after stab and was 100 accurate with no drawbacks to its use unlike other moves with similar power like draco meteor to be able to unleash such a move so freely was incredible it was made even stronger by choice band which was the best item by far for such a set it would have all the benefits of immediate extra power without any of the drawbacks of locking into one move, and since Komala would only ever be using Sleep Talk turn last resort anyway. As if all that wasn't enough, Komala wasn't just hitting hard with such a powerful stab move backed by Choice Band. It also had a huge attack stat of its own, coming in at a base 115, which would be impressive in OU, let alone the lower tiers. All this power together reached staggering heights. For perspective, Komala was capable of KOing Toxapex with last resort after Stealth Rock, while even bulky resists like Celesteela, Heatran, and Tyranitar were in potential danger of two hit KOs with Rock Sub. Of course, Komala's normal typing, meager speed, and unimpressive bulk all but ensured it wouldn't see any sort of OU use, but if it could put up those kinds of numbers against the defensive titans of the standard metagame, the lower tiers would surely stand nary a chance. Speaking of Komala's stats and the lower tiers, it wasn't just all attack and nothing else. Its other stats weren't anything awe-inspiring, but they were nothing that'd be out of place in the lower tier environment. They were perfectly serviceable considering that huge attack power. Base 65 speed could potentially actually get the job done in the right tier. Kamala's bulk wasn't outright bad either. 65 base HP and defense wasn't too good, but 95 base special defense was great, giving Kamala a crucial bit of cushion against weaker special attacks from walls, allowing it a key point of entry versus an archetype of Pokemon crucial to most teams. It also had an easy time switching in against them, with the incredible immunity to whatever status they wanted to throw out. Kamala seemed like it followed the basic idea of a wall breaker, against offensive squads, have enough survivability to get one KO, and that's sufficient. Where Whereas against weaker defensive squads, make them rue their team selection with its nigh unwallable power, as well as that unique ability to deny status. Oh, and what's that? We haven't even gotten into how Komala wasn't necessarily beholden to its choice band set and could make use of several superb utility options instead? Well, that's just fantastic, because Komala did indeed possess some of the best utility moves in the game. One, the incredibly important hazard removal of Rapid Spin. Two, the monstrous monumental momentum maintenance of U-Turn. And three, the less crucial but still invaluable item of knockoff. Komala could also run Assault Vest, an item perfectly suited to its toolkit. It had very little use for non-damaging moves and absolutely loved the substantial boost to its naturally solid special defense, allowing it to switch in and make the most of these excellent utility moves. Plus, even when running a more utility-oriented set, Komala was still a hard hitter. While not quite choice banned last resort, it still had a powerful stab in return, especially coming from that great attack stat. Plus, it had other excellent offensive moves as well. Earthquake was tried in true coverage to smack the rocks and steels that would attempt to resist its normal stat. While Sucker Punch was great to bypass the issue of Komala's speed against faster would-be revenge killers, particularly with its great super effective coverage against psychics, and especially another normal resist, Ghost. 
It could even bolster its coverage further for tier specific targets with excellent moves like Woodhammer, Superpower, and Play Rough. Oh, and if all that somehow wasn't enough, Komala could shed its Assault Vest for another item like Leftovers or Resist Berry in order to become truly nightmarish for any defensive team by boosting its attack to stratospheric levels with Sword Stats. And if it wanted to support its team more on a non Assault Vest set, it also had access to recovery for both itself and its teammates in Wish. Wow, you're probably thinking, that is a lot of fantastic attributes, and this thing seems primed for some sort of success. Sure, Komala's got its flaws, but surely it found some sort of place in at least one lower tier, right? Right? Well, at first, Komala plummeted through the tiering rung. No surprise there. It's got a bland offensive typing, meaning it had both a widely resisted stab on offense and a lack of resistances on defense, in conjunction with low speed and uninspiring bulk. This meant it wasn't exactly going to fit into high-powered metagames filled to the brim with Pokemon like powerful dragons. They didn't need its particular brand of power, while its utility was a far cry from necessary as well. Still, that was to be expected. Normal types generally don't hit their strides in the lower tiers until NU, or more commonly, PU. As it turns out Kamala was not at all bad in PU. In fact, it was quite decent. The problem was that many other normal types were plagued by the same hindrances that sent Kamala down to PU, and thus it had amazing competition with far better skill sets that it couldn't hope to keep up with. Being outdone by one superior physical normal type would have been bad enough, but Kamala was outdone by three, and they weren't just better, they were all among the best Pokemon in the metagame. Yeah, they didn't quite have quite the over-the-top insane power of Kamala's choice band last resort, or the utility of spin, U-turn, and knockoff, but they were much, much better offensive Pokemon. First of all, they were all much, much faster. Stoutland, the slowest of the bunch, clocked in at a solid base 80, a whopping 15 points higher than Kamala's. Next, Kangaskhan came in at a base 90. Stoutland and Kangaskhan also had much, much better natural bulk than Kamala did. This meant they could invest in their speed without becoming incredibly frail. Kamala had to choose between compensating for its poor natural bulk or attempting to make something of its speed, which even when invested in wasn't particularly impressive. The third normal type outclassing Kamala Dojo was quite frail in its own right, compounded by its stealth rock weakness, but it more than made up for this with an absolutely stunning base speed stat of 110, one of the highest in the tier. Sure, Kamala had higher base attack than any of these three, but it didn't amount to much when it still struggled to find opportunities to use it, at least compared to its faster, usually bulkier competition. Plus, it wasn't like Kamala was miles ahead of them. Kangaskhan was the weakest at base 95 attack, but still hit plenty hard since it had a stronger normal stab in double edge than Kamala's return, and had the natural bulk and speed to not need an assault vest, thus being able to power itself up further with Silk Scarf. Sure, it wouldn't quite match Choice Band Last Resort's power, but you wouldn't want to use that set in a tier so completely dominated by ghost types such as Jellicent, Oricorio Sensu, Golurk, Sableye, Haunter, and Spiritomb, to say nothing of other physically bulky normal resists such as Regirock, Ferrisseed, and Alolan Sandslash. As for Stoutland and Dojo, they both packed a fantastic base 110 attack stat, and Dojo even had a secondary stab, letting it unleash far more offensive terror than Komala could dream of in its permanent sleep. It was a shame because Komala was not bad in its own right. It was just so, so much worse than its competitors that you would basically only use it if winning was not your highest priority, which is not what the competitive scene was about. As such, Komala's usage was non-existent even all the way down in PU, and despite its unique set of tools, it wound up unteared in its debut generation. Kamala was never released in Generation 8, but it has returned in Generation 9, and with some interesting new tools. Most notable is, of course, Terrasilization, which allows Kamala to bypass the pitfalls of its normal typing. Theoretically, it could Terra Normal to unleash even more insane crushing power with Choice Band Last Resort, but that would be gimmicky and unsuccessful. You really want to rid it of that typing which so holds it back. Furthermore, Rapid Spin not only received a slight base power buff in Gen 8, but also boosts speed now, potentially letting Kamala bypass another one of its issues. So with these new tools to overcome its flaws, how has Komala fared so far? Sadly, at the time of this video, not well. Nobody would have expected an OU or even UU appearance from Komala, but even in the RU tier, its stats are just too low to accomplish much, even if it changes its typing. Its go-to set is a bulk up wish fairy that terrestrializes ghosts for better typing. Notably, it turns its fighting weakness into a fighting immunity. Komala uses Shadow Claw as its sweeping stab, while Rapid Spin both supports its teams through hazard clearing and boosts its own speed to potentially sweep more easily. A healing booster that is immune to status is already fantastic, and it helps clear hazards, and as a ghost type itself, it can even block opposing rapid spin? That sounds amazing! The problem is that it's not very threatening immediately, and it takes far too long to get set up, which makes it easily exploitable by both offensive and defensive Pokemon. It's not hard to wall, and it's not hard to overpower defensively. Kamala pretty much doesn't do anything. It can only hope for its eventual drop to the, at the time of this video, brand new NU, or failing that, PU, where it might be able to eke out some sort of 
bottom niche. Our fingers are crossed. There's nothing we'd like to see more than a competitively viable Kamala. And that's it. So how good was Kamala actually? Well, it's utterly loaded with promising attributes, mostly related to its unique ability, granting its status immunity alongside its huge attack stat and an absolutely fantastic move pull. However, like so many others before it, it has been betrayed by its mono normal typing and stats that are just not good enough. It just needs a little more speed and a little more bulk. This isn't asking for a lot, just enough for it to find a niche in PU of all tiers. That said, if Game Freak wants to bring back Megas and gives us a Mega Kamala, that would be amazing, but at least give it something. Here's hoping Kamala finds some sort of viability in Generation 9. Thanks for watching, everyone. And as always, if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And in the comments, I want to know, what do you think about competitive Kamala? What else would you give it to have it do something in higher tiers? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments. And thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos. And thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my current these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.